Hello, everybody. You're on the mic. Rogan rolls out. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some stuff going on with Joe Rogan, some comments that he recently made about gamers, and, you know, touch also upon the fact that he's um, moving out of California to go to Texas. Okay, so now recently in an interview done with Bounding Into Comics as well as being covered by uh, Yellow Flash and The Quartering, um, Joe Rogan had some interesting statements to make in regards to video gaming, you know, to gaming, gamers, video gaming, and it brought some heat to him, um, you know, in which he was talking about how you know, for him, it'd become a bit of an addiction and at least for him being a, somewhat of a waste of time. And, of course, some of these comments may have been taken a little bit out of context. Um, you know, he talked about how sometimes he'd get caught up playing, you know, playing certain video games. What I, if I understand correctly, the game in, in question was Quake. Which he, you know, um, you know, he he may have got caught up, you know, because for him, you know, video games are somewhat of a time kill. They they are for a lot of people. Okay, may have felt like you know he killed all this time that could have been used to pursue other things, um, and he got some backlash for it. You know, some people started, you know. Hey, oh, video games are a waste of time, you know, you can't make any money, you know, because some of what his content comments were, were like, you know, he could have been making, he could have been doing things that could have been making him more money. Which is true. I mean, now, Grant, does that, ne does that necessarily mean that video gaming or, or things connected with video gaming is not profitable? No doesn't mean that and I don't think that's what he necessarily was saying I think he was just talking about from his perspective because as the quartering pointed out there are people who like who you know there are even people on YouTube who make money you know reviewing video games playing you know playing video games online streaming streaming their gameplay there are people who review video games that get money for it they're you know video game journalists you know, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, not for everybody is it a waste of time, not, and not for everybody is it unprofitable. Some people do find profit in it, but I think in the context of what Joe was saying, it was, he was saying it for him, okay? For him, video games are more of a time killer. So, for him... Spending hours upon hours playing video games, getting caught up in them and being addicted to them, is not a profitable thing for him. Okay? I think the context at which he was talking about was from his perspective. Now, you don't have to agree with, with I mean, as the quartering pointed out, for many people, video gaming has been very profitable in the examples we talked about. From streaming your gameplay to reviewing games to to reporting on them, reporting on the you know, video game community. You know? I mean, I myself have gotten caught up playing. You know, it's kind of funny because even though I, again, I'm not one of those who's looking to make profit either. But, you know, I've sat there at times and it's like, maybe I get started playing, you know, a game online here, 9, 10 o'clock. And all of a sudden, it's like 3 o'clock, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning going, man, where'd the time go? And I'm sure a lot of us have had that experience. We, we just get so caught up playing a game. Whether it's an online game or a video game or what have you, we've all we've all done that. I think we've all 
got so caught up in, in, in it that it's like one minute to nine o'clock at night. The next next thing you know, it's like three, four o'clock in the morning. And you're sitting there, you're thinking to yourself, where the hell did the time go? <laughs> or you're thinking... I should have been to, I should have gone to bed two hours ago or three hours ago. You know, I'm sure we've all had those experiences. We got we get so caught up in what we're doing that we get lost and you know, all of a sudden it's like one minute it's nine PM, and the next it's three AM. And I think that's more or less the gist of what Joe was talking about in his comments. It's like I think he was from his perspective, it was probably maybe just simply a time killer. Maybe maybe it's not as profitable a way to spend his time um, than it would be for other people. I don't think I don't think his intent was to necessarily put down gamers, even though he may even though he may have been, he. Maybe he could have articulated his points a little bit better. I know um, the quartering was kind of on him on that, about boomering his statements. But, you know, what can you say? He was at least speaking, he was, he was speaking his perspective. Okay. And people have been wanting to try to cancel Joe Rogan for a lot of things he said, like, you know, like, you know the fact that he does he does he's not too keen um on joe biden now i've heard different story i mean i don't know if joe rogan is really big on sharing his ideological beliefs you know i know yellow flash indicated he may lean to the left a little bit um but at least but I don't think, you know, I don't think Joe Rogan, who who Flash has commented, is a self-made, kind of a, is a self-made man in the entertainment business. So much like Ricky Gervais, he can basically say what he wants. And even if people try to cancel him, it's not going to hurt him as badly. But, you know, but what can you say? It's... That's cancel culture, and cancel culture's stupid, so. But aside from that, one of the other, you know, big things that, that has been talked about, too, is that Joe Rogan was saying how he's going to move from California to Texas because, you know, less regulation, less, less taxes, and more freedom. You know, and, hey, I live in Southern California. If, if I had the means to, I'd probably be getting out of here, too. But, fortunately, um... I don't, so, but, you know, there's, you know, many, some of us, some of us have come to call California California. <laughs> I guess you can guess why. You know, not that I'm, not that I'm trying to get too political here, everybody, you know, we can all agree to disagree and still treat each other with respect and treat each other as we would want to be treated. Okay, so so let me just get that said right then and there, and then move on to move on to some, to some more non-divisive topics. Okay, so that's basically all I'm going to say. All I need to say about the whole Joe Rogan situation. Um, so let's look to some happier stuff. Let's, today is July the 28th, 2020. So let's go back in time and look back on this date in Nietzsche history. Okay. So, first off, let's go back 70, 70 years ago today. DC Comics, um, at the time known as National Comics Publications Incorporated, um, put out on the newsstands a bi-monthly um, love slash romance comic. A 
the love slash romance comic, um, Girls Romance is number five. Girls Romance is number five, of course, was one of many, um, love slash romance comics that were popular in the, you know, from the 50s to the 70s. You know, in this particular case, Girls Romances was a bi-monthly title. Um, the on-sale date was this date in 1950, um, with a cover date of October, November, um, 1950. Um, the editor on, the editor was Robert Kneiher, who would, who would go on later, you know, after, after William Moulton Marston's, um, would, would sell, would basically sell the rights to the Wonder Woman comics to DC fully, he would take over editing, um, the Wonder Woman stories, particularly in Sensation Comics, and, of course, the, her eponymous title. So on this date, 70 years ago in 1950, Girls Romances number 5 was released on the newsstands. So, um, moving on then. On this date in the year 2000, 20 years ago today, the U.S. American animated TV series Baby Blues from Warner Brothers made its debut on this date in 2000. And for 26 episodes from this date in 2000 to March the 10th, 2002. Um, so as I said, on this date in 2000, um, Baby Blues would make its debut on television. would premiere on this date in 2000. And on this date in 2010, we have actually three interesting items here to kind of go over. First off, um, on this date in 2010 at the SmackDown tapings for the August 6, 2010 um, episode of SmackDown, Dolph Ziggler would defeat Kofi Kingston for the WWE um, Intercontinental Championship. He'd hit the zigzag on Kofi Kingston to... When the tie, when the Intercontinental title on at the SmackDown tapings for the August sixth, on this date in two thousand ten. Okay. Also on this date in two thousand ten, um, serialized in the Aria manga magazine, um, the mangas manga dog or uh, manga dogs. And Demon from Afar made their debut in the Aria Manga magazine on this date in 2010. On this date in 2010, the mangas Manga Dogs and Demon from Afar would make their debut in the Aria, Maria, Aria Manga magazine on this date in 2010. Okay, so with all that being said now, um, as always guys, if you'd like to contact me directly, my Discord is in the links below. You can direct message me there. You can check out the Discord and join if you'd like. Um, also, I'm still promoting a bunch of different dub companies. As, you know, Funimation is not the only game in town. You can check out some of the other works that are out there. Also, um, I'm still promoting Vix GoFundMe. I also just recently put back up Tug's Indiegogo link because of the fact I just found out that, you know, they're still running that. I was under the impression that they had finished that, but I learned that I was wrong, so I put that back up. As always, guys, never feel like you have to donate. If you have the means to, it's on your heart to do so, please consider donating. If you've already donated, please consider donating again. And if you cannot donate, you can still help out the cause by sharing the link. Because sharing is caring, and you never know. Maybe somebody in your circle may decide, may look at it and decide they want to help out too.
And as always, guys, if you like this content, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I always look forward to the conversations with you guys, as long as they're civil and respectful. Um, also, don't forget, this Friday it will be my next um, voice uh, VA profile premiere, voice acting profile premiere. Um, this week, I'll be look, taking a look at New York-based voice actor um, J. David Brimmer, a.k.a. Mike, Michael Alston Bailey. Most no notable for his vo doing the voice work or being the English voice for Odeon Ishtar in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Um, we'll be taking a look at some of his other works as well. Um, and also, you know, one the one last point I want to make is this will be the last week of Beyond the Mic segment as of Monday, August the 3rd. 2020 we will be going live so i hope to catch you guys i hope you guys will catch the rest of these videos hope to see you guys at the premiere the mic stand on monday august the 3rd 2020 i of course will still have the um this day niche history segment as part of that it will be basically me going over niche news and i'm of course for fridays i'm working on getting some guests on for some interview discussion panels so Hopefully, you know, hopefully I can get some people on. And until then, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.